wish you all a very happy Valentine's Day and hope you enjoy the day immensely. We are here today to introduce Dr. Judd. He is a emeritus professor at UNCG. He's been doing the Greensboro Realtors Association statistics for our, for our end of the year for years. And we thank you, Dr. Judd, for that. It um, is a very good time to still be buying real estate. We have vast selection at hand. Pricing is wonderful. And always remember, real estate is local. It is local right down to your neighborhoods. At this point, I'd like to introduce Dr. Judd. Most people are out thinking about what they're going to be doing tonight, so glad you're here, but uh, here you are with me. I wish I had, had some better news for you. I wish I could tell you that 2010 was a was a turnaround year, but unfortunately, this <coughs> what we see on this chart is we have a continuation of the same trends that we've been seeing for the past several years. Uh, we have a quality adjusted price index where we try to standardize for the quality of homes that were sold. Prices were down a little over 7%. The number of homes sold was down about 5%. The rate of decline in homes sold was a little bit less than the previous year. But nevertheless, the, the same trends seem to be predominating. If you look here at the stats that you'll find in that handout, <coughs> other kinds of things that jump out at you, inventories are up, so the number of homes available for sale is a little bit higher. Inventory sales ratio is higher, running at 11.5 months, uh, substantially higher than it was, say, four years ago when we were looking at a ratio of about three to four months. So. <coughs> Those are those are the negative side. I could point point to some potentially positive things. Time on the market for homes sold was down just a little bit, and the spread or the ratio between the sales price and the listing price was a little bit higher, indicating that there's a little bit less discounting in the market going on. So, those are some positive things. And as Kathleen was saying, it's never been a better time to buy a home, and particularly if you look at affordability. Our affordability index. Because of lower housing prices and low mortgage rates is just off the track. Uh, in the whole time that we've been uh, tracking that index, it's never been as high as it is right now. So if, you, if you're employed and if you have good credit, this is a wonderful time to buy a home. It, the selection and availability has never been better. Thinking about <coughs> where the, the weakness in the market is, the, the, there's weakness all across the market. <coughs> But the weakness tends to be concentrated in the higher income homes or higher priced homes. If you see this, this graph, you see for homes above uh, half a million dollars, the inventory sales ratio is over 28 months. Uh, the average across the, all, the whole, the whole uh, market was 11.5. It's, it's lower at the, at the lower end of the market. And the same thing is true if we look at time on the market. The, the weaknesses again in the higher priced homes for homes over half a million dollars average time on the market was about 190 days at the low end for homes less than 75,000 it's about 79 days so again that, that concentration of where the weakness is but again the weakness is, is all across the market but that's just where it's concentrated here I'll show you a, a map of inventory sales ratios across zip codes in our area if you go in one of the purple areas, that's that's good because that means the inventory sales ratio is relatively low. If you live in one of the, in the red areas, that's that's not so good. That's where the higher inventory sales ratios are. You can see how geographically it shapes up across the market. Just thinking about uh, numbers from uh, for various zip codes, the largest number of sales of homes this year was in zip code 27410, that, of course that's Northwest Greensboro, and it had 353 sales. It was followed by zip code 27406, which is in South Greensboro, the 291. The Summerfield area and the Oak Ridge area had the, or the two areas with the highest priced homes were sold. And the highest inventory sales ratio, they were in, in two zip codes in Southeast Greensboro is the red areas on the map. The lowest rate inventory sales ratio was in western Guilford County. It's 27,235. 
there, the inventory sales ratio was only 5.7 months. That was the lowest of any zip code in the area. So that's how, how it shakes out. <laughs> you ask, well, you know, when is this going to stop? When are we going to have a turnaround? I, I think it's basically related to employment right now. We're, we're not going to start selling a lot more homes until we get a lot more employment growth. And you see that, that red line, the triad employment through December is still, is still declining. So looking for a turnaround each time we do this report or each, each month we, we look for some positive developments. Now, we did our report for the triad, which we put in the triad business index. This is a monthly indicator, which is the same as the other graph, but it was just for the Greenville area. This is for the entire triad, and this is through January. And what you see is the, the graph for average prices and quantity sold turned up a little bit in the last several months of the year after seasonal adjustment. So we hope that's the start of, of a turnaround. Uh, this market has given us some head fakes before. So, uh, you know, when we, and like I said, we haven't begun to see any real employment growth in our area. But if there is hope, that's the best news I have for you. I think the market is, is perhaps beginning to turn around. So that's about it. I'll take some questions if you have any. Does anyone have any questions for Dr. John? A little bit. Yeah, um, yeah. I uh, I was thinking last week about the uh, amount of uh, sort of off the books inventory that a lot of banks have right now. Yeah. Um, and do we have any sense of how long those might be dispersed into the market, and therefore will they keep the market? Uh, see, down. See, the only thing I only thing I know is the inventory that the banks have turned over to realtors. That's right. What I okay. Can, okay. And, and I do track uh, foreclosures, and foreclosures are still up. Okay. So foreclosures, there's been no real diminution in the rate of foreclosures in the area. So, okay. Uh, so Thank you. There's a, there's a lot of inventory, but which again, if you look for the positive side, for looking for a home, never been the be better time to buy one. So what do you yeah, think about interest rates for the coming year? Uh, looks like interest rates are going up. I, I think I think you know it looks like the ten year bond rate, the thirty year bond rate are all moving higher now. Uh, <laughs> despite the Fed's QE two and and other kinds of things, rates have been moving up uh, in the government mortgage uh, government bond market since uh, since October. So I think that's a trend as the economy gets better, we're gonna we're gonna see some little bit higher rates. So that's the downside. I think that's why another reason we have to have some employment growth to really begin to get our housing market moving again. Yes. New construction. Can you talk a little bit about what's happening in that area and what are we seeing? Is it coming back or are we still seeing that it's building permits have, have moved up a little bit okay. the last couple of months. But it's been very slight. If you look at year over year trend, it's still down. And and my thinking about, about construction in general is it you know, you look at all this inventory on the market and you think, how many people really want to buy, build, a, build a new home? And if you look at, at construction, non-residential construction, we don't need to build anything else either because we, the workforce is not growing. You know, as long as we're not putting people to work, we don't need, don't need to build more office buildings or other kinds of things. So uh, construction is weak and I don't see any turnaround in our area. I think I was looking at a number of jobs in the construction sector over the past year. I think it's down about 7% uh, last year. And the trend has been down since uh, probably the middle of 2007. Don, what's your thought about employment growth as far as here in the area? Obviously, FedEx ground will be opening up fourth quarter. Uh, hopefully, the, uh, the FAA will be approving the Honda Jets so that from a manufacturing standpoint, the end of this year, beginning of of 2012, the first quarter, some of that will start, you know, ramping up. But what are you saying? You know, Kelly, Kelly we, we've seen, begin to see the, the, the kind of a glimmer of employment growth nationally. Normally, we follow a national cycle. Mm -hmm. So I, I keep thinking month to month, we're going to see, start seeing some employment growth here. I've been surprised we haven't seen it already. I would hope we, as we move into this year that we begin to see it, you know, reasonably quickly. I'm, I'm like you. I, I, I think you know we've had some good news, but then on, on the on the on the downside, we've had the American Express that mm -hmm. hit us hit us hard. So you know we're due, we're due for some good news. We've we've been suffering for the last three four years. But basically here at the Triad, what's still
the, the reason that our employment growth is so is so poor is we continue to shed jobs in, the, in our manufacturing sector. Mm -hmm. Nationally, manufacturing employment has begun to level out, start to move back up, but not here. So we certainly some of that good news is going to filter down here, and we hope it happens you know, quickly. But so far, nothing. From the mortgage standpoint, governments move to eliminate Fannie Mae, yeah. Freddie Mac. What, what's your thought long term as far as, as it depends on the mortgage market? Well, I, I, I think you know that's going to bring somewhat higher mortgage rates and 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 somewhat less less mortgage availability. I mean, you know, Fannie Mae we know has been very responsible for making it easier for middle income people to borrow. And because of the, the guarantee on, on the money that, that, that Fannie and Freddie were lending, if we take that guarantee away, I mean, I think we, we have to know that rates are going to go up. If you, if, if you want to see how much, just compare the rate that you have to pay on a securitized loan, what is it, $455,000 $500, versus a three-quarter of a million loan. But it's, it's, it's about 100 basis points. So I think we take Fannie completely out of the market, which was one of the things, the proposals. I think that's what we can expect. I think we're going to pay probably about one percent higher. Everything else equal, about one percent higher mortgage rates, and it's going to be tougher. You know, for for some times, it's going to be tougher for people to get mortgages. And everybody, you mentioned mortgage credit to anybody, and they say, oh, no. <laughs> everybody's afraid of that. So. Do you feel like the target on interest rates when we were in Washington, D.C., listening to some reports from economists back last May, targeted then to 2012 being in the 7 to 7.5% 7 range, the Fed's target? 7.5%? They said 7 to 7.5% would be for the, the target. For bond? Um, mortgage rates. Uh, well, by the end of 2012. By the end of 2012. Well, that could be again. But I'm thinking. I'm thinking that the ten-year, the ten-year bond, by the by the middle of next year, so by the middle of, of 2012, could be around six percent. So the ten-year bond is a little under four now. The reason is you think about. There's an old rule that says the the, the nominal rate on the ten-year bond ought to be equal to the, the the nominal growth in in GDP plus inflation. So if we have, let's say, 4% uh, GDP growth and 2% inflation, that gives you a 10-year bond rate. And, and then you stack on top of that, maybe mortgage credit will cost you 100 to maybe 150 basis points more. So 7 mm -hmm. to 7.5% might not be too, too unreasonable. Again, it's a great time to buy now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Let's think about that. Yeah. Uh, state reported uh, that... Uh, the 2010 that foreclosures were down a little bit in Guilford and then they reported that they were up again uh, in January uh, foreclosure starts yeah. I should say um, do you have a sense of whether that was uh, again just a head fake or <laughs> was uh, uh, do you think foreclosures are still rippling through the <coughs> Guilford I'll send, you, I'll send you my numbers I take those net numbers from the state and seasonally adjust them uh -huh. and print them out I do it every month as part of that tri business index yeah so okay I'll send you those numbers I think you'll see that the trend is is still up I don't see any big downturn in foreclosures and okay. my I was, I was just going to say, we know that the government or the, the, the banks are holding back and they're not, yeah. they're not um, they, they figured out that the, that the economy can withstand right. so many at a time, so they, yeah. they're feeding my, my, my graph, if you look at it, it's kind of like that, okay, but it hadn't gone like that. Mm -hmm. but it's, the it's, rate of change is slowed. That's about the best I can say. Dr. Jones, I want to thank you very much for your time. Sure. Lovely to have you back. Let's go have enjoy some of that sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone needs to be enjoying that sunshine today. Go find a friend to sell a house. Great time to buy a house. Hope you all write offers all week long. And for the year. Thank you.